Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new episode with me, Danny. Uh, today I decided to take a step back and instead of doing a normal tutorial, I wanted to do something different. In fact, we are going to explain certain important concepts that you need to know in Google Tag Manager. It's going to make your life not only easier, but you'll be on the right track to doing things the way they are supposed to be done. And today's episode, I will talk specifically about what workspaces are and the version control associated with it. Let's get started with our first uh, question of the day. What are workspaces? Well, you can think of it like this. Workspaces are areas inside of Google Tag Manager where you can go about doing your uh, development, creating tags, triggers, and uh, variables whatever you need to do in separate areas. So uh, for the free version of Google Tag Manager, you are allowed to get three workspaces. So you can have your main workspace that you're doing uh, some kind of configuration A, another workspace for doing configuration B and configuration C. Uh, now, when do you need to use workspaces? The answer is effective immediately. For the longest time, I decided not to use uh, more than one workspace and it worked well for me and probably for you it will. But if you want to do it the right way, you need to start thinking about using them ASAP. Next, why do you need to use workspaces? Well, workspaces is about separating the concerns. This means that if you have multiple teams, each team working on a different a set of configuration, this is the perfect scenario for using separate workspaces. Another reason you might want to use workspaces, you can dedicate a special workspace as a sandbox and use it for all your tests and all your debugging. And if you want to try out some new experiment, it's great because you can have everything in that workspace and it will not pollute your other workspaces. And finally, how do we use workspaces inside of Google Tag Manager? Let's get directly and see how this is done. Here it is. I'm going to do a demo under this particular uh, account. So this is my default workspace. As you can see here, by looking at the left navigation, I only have one. And so if I want to create a new one, I can go by clicking here on the plus sign and giving my workspace a name. I'm calling it Sandbox Workspace. This means that I can just give a simple description saying this will be used for testing purposes. All right, and I'm saving it. So if I click here, I see that I have two of them. And you can see here, it tells me that one workspace is left because I have a free account. So I can use it for, I can call it, for example, third party workspace. And I can say this is used by third party company developments. Okay, so what I've essentially done is uh, right now create three workspaces. The default one will be used locally within my organization, uh, the sandbox can also be used locally. And the third one is the third party workspace, which is uh, the one that I will give access to for third party companies who are going to do some development for me. That way my work is not polluted with, with other development going on in the company. Now, here is the very important concept that you need to understand. Though these workspaces work independently, Every time you publish a workspace, you're pushing all the changes into one streamlined version uh, control. This means that within your container, and we will explain what containers mean in the next episode, but within one container, you can have only one stream of versions for your publications. So it's very important 
to keep that in mind because every time any of these workspaces gets published, the changes gets pushed into the main version uh, streamline that you have and that will dictate where your current uh, status of your updates is. So that's very important. Keep that in mind. And this actually makes a lot of difference when you understand it this way. And um, so this is pretty much it. Uh, you need to understand also that as long as you haven't published anything, your changes within the workspace are saved only within the workspace. It's only when you decide to publish that the changes gets pushed into the uh, timeline where you have the versions that go through uh, your development starting from version one, two, three. And when you do that, when you do publish, make sure that you give it a proper name and description. That way you know exactly what took place, what changes happened on that particular uh, development line. And uh, this is pretty much it. If you want to read more documentation, there is a little bit more advanced topics when it comes to uh, merging two workspaces together or where there's some kind of conflict. Uh, there are different colors, red, green, and blue that would appear and that will give you the option to uh, decide what do you want to do about the conflicts when they occur. And this is pretty much it. Workspaces is really good. Start using it. And if you have any questions, make sure you put comments in the link below. And don't forget, subscribe to this channel if you like development in the world of analytics and also in the world of web design. Until a new episode with me, take care.